Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we are going to be taking on one of the fan favorites of the series, the Mera Mera no Mi. The Mera Mera no Mi is a Logia type fruit that allows its user to conjure, manipulate and become fire. It was eaten by fan favorite character Portgas D Ace and first showcased during the Alabaster arc. However, following Ace's death, it was reincarnated and then consumed by Sabo, who made his debut use of the fruit during the Dress Rosa arc. As for its name, the Mera Mera no Mi is the Japanese onomatopoeia for the noise made when suddenly bursting into flame. As a result, a fairly standard translation has come from both Viz and Funimation, which is the Flame Flame Fruit. However, there is a difference when it comes to the 4Kids dub, in which it is named the Flare Flare Fruit. Also interestingly enough, the Funimation subtitles also refer to the Mera Mera no Mi as the Flare Flare Fruit, despite the Funimation dub adhering to the Flame Flame translation. Not quite not sure what that's about at all, but it is an annoying little inconsistency. Alright, so the Mera Mera no Mi is a Logia, which as we all know by now comes with some pretty powerful default settings like intangibility and all that. However, this is the first Logia we've covered in the encyclopedia that deals with a naturally destructive element, and as expected it's pretty damn devastating, having been said to be capable of sinking countless battleships and burning down mighty cities. I mean, according to Gats anyway. But we have no real reason to doubt him, because we have many first-hand examples of the Mera Mera no Mi's power. Starting simply, we have the idea of the Hikan attack, which literally means flame fist, and has been performed by both users of the fruit. Basically, it involves the user turning their fist into flames and then launching a column of fire at an opponent. It sounds really simple, possibly even underwhelming, but the sheer power of fire cannot be understated. As for the nature of the fire itself, it's not exactly known how hot the user of the Mera Mera no Mi can make their flames. Generally, a fire's temperature is dependent on its fuel source, and thus it's a bit hard to predict it when we're talking about a magical fruit, but let's consider some real world examples. The center of a lit cigarette will burn at 585 degrees Celsius, and good god, that's hot. I mean, I personally start complaining when the temperature reaches over 23 degrees Celsius, but that's just a teeny tiny example of a flame. If we go a few steps up and expand that into a bonfire, then we're looking at temperatures of around 1,100 degrees Celsius. Very hot indeed. And that's probably along the lines of what a Hiken attack would most resemble. A terrifying thick column of flame burning somewhere around 1,000 degrees headed straight for you. Yeah, not quite my ideal scenario to be in. With that said, the Hiken is one of the most basic attacks that the Mera Mera no Mi is capable of, but we can also amp things up quite a bit with one of the fruits ultimate attacks known as Dai Enkai Ente, literally meaning something along the lines of Great Flame Commandment, Flame Emperor. Longish name, yeah? But it involves the user of the fruit conjuring a giant fireball which strongly resembles a sun and launching it at their opponents. And at that point, all you can really do is just pity whoever said opponent is. But switching up our thinking, the Mera Mera no Mi can also be used in a much more precise manner. For example, the user can turn their fingers into flames and shoot literal fire bullets, each likely to be far more powerful than your everyday bullet, at least in the One Piece world. Plus, there are a surprise surprising variety of tactical uses of the fruit. The one major advantage being able to conjure flames would give the user in most situations is to control the movement of their opponent. If the user had a particular mind for tactics, then they could structure their blast so as to put their enemy in exactly the position they want them in to deliver the real attack. Alternatively, the user of the Mera Mera no Mi may wish to keep their powers completely hidden, lulling their adversary into a false sense of security and then say bursting into flame the moment they came into close contact. Although if we still wish to show off, then the user can also perform a technique known as Hotorubi literally meaning firefly light, whereby the user creates many small glowing fireballs and sends them floating casually towards a foe. They seem harmless enough, but at the right time the user can activate them, causing significant damage. The Mera Mera no Mi also works well for users who enjoy engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat, as they would be able to turn various bits of their body into flames, conjuring a boosting kinetic force when throwing a punch or a kick. But now we arrive at the one big weakness of the Mera Mera no Mi, which is obviously water. Now this weakness likely is not as crippling as the Suna Suna no Mi, but water most certainly does cancel out flames, and in a story like One Piece where a stupid amount of the world is made up of water, that could leave you quite commonly compromised. Interestingly enough, the flames of the Mera Mera no Mi can also be cancelled out by other Logia abilities. For example, Smoker's Moku Moku no Mi was certainly capable of fighting the Mera Mera flames on equal footing, quite possibly because the smoke may have been able to remove oxygen and thus snuff out the flames. If that were to be the case, then a fruit like Caesar Clown's Gasu Gasu no Mi would also be a natural counter to it, as it has the ability to remove all oxygen within a certain radius. But let's not let all of that dismay us, because the Mera Mera no Mi does also also offer the user quite a lot in terms of practical usage. It's quite a nice utility to have actually, making cooking anytime, anywhere rather convenient, and also acting as a permanent and infinite source of light. In regards to Ace's use of the fruit, there's not a whole lot more to add. He was a very proficient wielder of the Mera Mera no Mi, able to use it to become a 
division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates and acquire a bounty of 550 million berries. His use in the fruit was so skilled that he innovated all of the attacks I've previously stated, and furthermore he was able to successfully combat Blackbeard by invoking the fruit's powers even after they were significantly weakened by the Yami Yami no Mi. And when I say successfully combated, yeah I know he lost, but he put up a damn good fight. Ace did have one particularly nice use of the fruit though, which was to use the fire to propel his tiny boat raft thingy, which allowed him to comfortably and swiftly traverse the Grand Line and assumedly the New World. He also must have been pretty damn confident in his own abilities to be using such a small vessel surrounded by that much water, to which he has a two-fold weakness to. One, because he's a devil fruit user, and two, because his fruit is fire-based. As for Sabo, he's still quite new to the fruit. However, immediately upon consumption, Sabo demonstrated a solid competency for wielding its power, implying that he likely studied the fruit and or Ace's use of the fruit. He even began immediately adapting the powers to his own personal fighting style, which has a particular affinity for dragons. With that said, even Sabo was shown to struggle with the raw power of the Mera Mera no Mi due to the unruly nature of fire. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a fire human. In addition to creating default flames from your body, it may be possible to augment those flames and even make them stronger if the user were to find a way to add another fuel source to them. The Mera Mera no Mi would also provide the user with a natural resistance to most heat-based attacks. Not all though, not all at all. In fact, magma in particular is still a uh, pretty big problem. So maybe watch out for that. In essence, the Mera Mera no Mi is one hell of a powerful devil fruit capable of incredible amounts of destruction. It is most certainly suited to a more combat-based individual, but it also possesses a decent amount of day-to-day -day utility and Keep in mind that humanity uses fire a hell of a lot in everything from generic home life to mass production and industry. There will always be a use for fire, making this devil fruit incredibly sought after in the series and one that I feel just about every single one of us would eat with no questions asked. And with that, we are going to commit the Mera Mera no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next week, we'll be taking time to examine the Super Super no Mi, a rather awesome and deadly Paramecia. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line View Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also, I've recently launched a Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Mera Mera no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.